Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And today I have finally, after years of uh, trying to work this out, uh, and mainly just on my end with everything going on in California and then the move over here, um, we have Anthony Perez. Anthony, say hello to everyone and let them know where they can find you on YouTube. What's going on, everybody? My name is Anthony A. Perez. And uh, first, a big thanks to, to Seek for having me here. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, long overdue. Uh, but yeah, I review movies, TV, talk about Star Wars, tons of other geeky stuff over on my channel, simply titled Anthony A. Perez. I think I've made enough videos at this point that if you just type in Anthony Perez movie reviews, you should find me as the first choice. Uh, so yeah, thanks again for having me on, man. Sure. Actually, I tested that. You actually are the first one. If you type in Anthony Perez, you popped up first. Um, awesome. Yeah. For a while, that wasn't the case because there was another Anthony Perez that did like travel vlogs. And recently, uh -huh. he kind of disappeared. Like, I don't know if he just took his channel down or whatever. Uh, I had messaged him a couple times just because we had the same name. And then there's another Anthony Perez that has way more subscribers, but way less videos. And it's just like this super muscle bound bodybuilder dude. Okay. And uh, so yeah, I, I was like my whole goal the entire time with this name was to be able to surpass the other Anthony Perez's. So it seems like I've done that thankfully. It's funny you say that because uh, a Venom vlog was obviously what I went by for like four years almost. And uh, and I decided, okay, we're going to be ending the Venom vlog and I'm going to switch to back to Seek and Destroy, which is what I started out as. And yeah. I when I actually searched Venom vlog, I was not, I think I was number two maybe, but there were other Venom vlogs out there. And I was like, oh, crap. But they weren't like about the Venom character. They were like, they were about like, like one was like a guy who did like snakes on his channel. <laughs> he talked mm. about snakes. I was like, oh, that makes sense. And then there was like someone else who was just like some kid who just called himself the Venom Vlog. And so I was just like, all right, well, uh, I guess I'll go back to Seek and Destroy and I'll be the only one. So that's, yeah, it's good. That's a good idea for branding purposes. Yeah, for sure. Well, Seek and Destroy is definitely like, that's the coolest way to be able to use your actual name for <laughs> right. a, a really badass uh, you know, YouTube name. Uh, but uh, yeah, the Venom vlog, I, I can see how there would be something for like maybe snakes or stuff like that. But yeah, sure. even to this day, um, if I, you know, you still type in Venom Vlog, I actually tested that myself. Uh, right. Your channel still pops up, you know, like the first oh, one that pops up. Cool, awesome. Yeah, so, All right. Yeah, so if you, I, I did it the other day. I typed in Venom Vlog on YouTube. First thing that popped up was Seek and Destroy, like your channel. So, oh, awesome. Oh, that's, hey, that's even better. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that'll probably confuse some people, though. Um, but yeah, what I, what I like is so we we kind of met online. Um, and funny enough, we now live in the same city, which is crazy. Um, yeah. But uh, but we met online, and uh, you know I kind of got pulled into your channel along with, um, and then through you, kind of was exposed to Rashad and and uh, Mike Z and uh, and obviously Black Tastic, and it's been really great. I, in my interview with Mike, I called you the lighthouse. Uh, I was like, you know, you kind of uh, are this beacon for all these ships that are lost in the YouTube sea, and you pulled us all together. Um, and uh, and so like, what what were some of the things that like? Because I can't, I have a terrible memory. In your in your memory, what was a, how how did we come across each other? And I know reviews are what I started watching your show for. Um, but like, how did our ships? How did my ship come to your lighthouse, basically? So I think how 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 it panned out, if I remember correctly, and and it's been so long at this point, I can't yeah. believe now in October I'll I'll have been on YouTube for three years, which seems crazy because I met you fairly early into my time on YouTube. You were one of my earliest friends. There's like a group of like I would say like five to ten individuals that I met early, and you know that included Rashad and Q Reviews, Black Tastic, yourself, uh, another guy named Jacob Martin, another guy named Travis. So there's there's the like a good handful of you guys that were like that initial kind of peer group that I made uh, and none of you guys not all of you guys but some of you didn't know each other you know like I know yeah. Blacktastic and Rashad and Q Reviews they knew each other already but a lot of the others didn't know each other and so yeah it was a really cool experience to be able to like hop onto YouTube because the main reason I started YouTube and something I kind of have to consistently remind myself of uh, whenever I feel down on YouTube in terms of view counts or you know whatever the case may be is that I started YouTube for a sense of community and uh, I'd be lying if I said that that hasn't happened, you know? Right. Uh, because I think we can all, anybody who's into especially geek culture stuff, I think we can all relate to, you know, going to work, hanging out with their everyday friends and, 
you get super excited in your case about comic book related stuff and, and you know the comic and and and, and venom and, and the you know, transformers and all this kind of stuff you know for me with star wars and just movies in general and what could be you know a good fun conversation sometimes with a peer about a movie is like for them it's just it's good or it's bad and right. you know it's just like and you start to get into it you try to get passionate about it in a discussion and you can just see they're not interested they don't really care to engage further than i liked it or i didn't like it and right. so for me I wanted to find more of a community that were like some of my closest friends who all like this kind of stuff and we could talk about it in depth. And I wanted to be able to kind of make more friends that I could do that with and be able to just kind of obviously babble out my thoughts on movies um, as well. So yeah, that was pretty much why I started the channel. And once I started meeting all of you guys, I was like, yeah, I definitely want to start collaborating and commenting on each other's videos and supporting one another. So I don't know exactly how you and I first started off, but I, yeah. I have to imagine that it had to do with my very first uh, movie review on the channel, which was Venom. Venom uh, it was right. my yeah. very first movie review, which is just cringe to go back and watch now, like <laughs> compared to like, I mean, number one, not only did I have I documented, um, you know, all these movie thoughts on the channel, I've also documented my, uh, my weight gain from the beginning to now, which is just fantastic. Um, but also I did really cringy things. You could tell I just didn't know what I was doing yet in that first review, but it's funny to look back on. Uh, but yeah, I started this channel to, to get a sense of community, man, to, to, to find a, friends and be able to connect all of you guys. So to look back now at the library of content that I've made that's featured so many people for collab reviews and to even like pass through there and see the the thumbnail that you and you and I did with uh, with Mike, you know, from the Z review or now, yeah, now did you see that? Yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, just super cool stuff to be able to look back and see how I've all I've connected some people and be able to see. One of the coolest things too is connecting people together and then starting to see them do videos together. When yeah. I, like, I feel I feel a proud moment when I'm like off to the side and I'm like, oh snap! Like Seek and Mike did a podcast together. Like that's so cool. Like they didn't know who they were because I remember after that conversation. I'm sorry, I'm rambling so much. Yeah, um, I remember after that conversation that I was talking to Mike and he was like. Um, he was like, yeah, that seat guy was really cool. Like, I think I'm going to try to like reach out to him, try to do some videos with him. And lo and behold, then you guys ended up doing it. So yeah, man, it's been, it's been a really cool experience. Yeah. And um, it's funny. Cause like, I, I do like collabing with people like, but I like to do it in this kind of format where I have like a conversation and get to know them so that people yeah. who watch my show can get to know you guys too. And I, I just, I like that more. Like I'm not very, um, creative when it comes to collaborating like i'm like i just like talking to you um and uh but it was funny because mike like you like uh he like he immediately reached out and was like let's cross streams man let's cross streams and and i'm like i know and i, I get I, you know with um because i work a full-time job and then i'm writing a book series so like i always feel bad because i'm always like yes i want to do this and then everything starts piling up or like in May, I was I was lining up some interviews in May, and then we had like within like a month before it happened, I had to go in. They were like, "Hey, we had to do a surgery in May," and I go, "Dang it!" Because all I wanted to do for my birthday was like take the week off and do a bunch of parasite podcast interviews, and then that no. was like, "Well, that's all gone now." Um, so it's like it, life always does that to me. It seems, and uh, and I, I people always tell me it's because you keep doing too much, <laughs> and uh, and I'm like, well, I like doing a lot, but I'm glad you know. I'm glad we're finally here. We're we're talking together, and um and people can get to know you now. And yeah, that's I think it was Venom, um because after the movie came out, I started going around just watching other people's Venom reviews and uh, commenting whether I agreed with them or not. And um I know Black Tax uh, Black Tastic and I met a little soon after that. Um and then uh, and then like I said through your channel, I got to see Q and Rashad and Mike, and so um it's just been awesome. And you're right, I I understand what you mean by you see sometimes you like, Hey, I worked really hard on a video and you'll see like 20 views or something. Like I get that too. Like where I'm like, Oh man, I, I put a lot of work. I put like, I edited like two days for that video or whatever. And yeah. there, there is that little sense of like, man, I wish people saw it more. But at the same time, I started this for the same reason you did was community. And that, immediately takes over that like all right you didn't get the views but look at the community you have look at the community you're part of um and so i completely understand that and i don't think there's anything wrong with that i mean we are we are here for community and things but we also we do want to grow because it it reflects our success and compliments in some way or uh, accomplishments in some way so i get that too i think that's human i um so uh, so with that in mind like let's let's kind of start there with your channel, like um, three years and you're over a thousand subscribers, that's actually really good. I know some people are like, oh, 
you know, this person hit 5,000 in three months or whatever. And it's like, yeah, but they're talking about something that's either controversial or that's like a hot button issue or these things. You love movies. I love comics. So we, we are catering to a niche audience in some regard uh, yeah. with that. Um, are, would you say overall that um, it's because it sounds like you are just happy with what you've built so far and excited for where you're going to go from here? Yeah, man, I, I'm not going to lie. Lately, I've, uh, and I've actually shared a little bit of this with Mike recently. I, I've been like in a bit of a mentally discouraged rut about my channel lately. And it okay. just comes down to the views more than anything. Sure. And that's just me being honest. But with that said, I'm very happy that it hasn't like deterred me from putting out content. If anybody who sees me on YouTube knows that I'm still putting out anywhere between three to four, maybe five videos a week. I try to you know, keep it moderate so people don't like get oversaturated. But like this week, for instance, I've already put out three videos because the new Monsters Incorporated show just ended. So I wanted to talk about that. And then I got two early screeners for movies that I just um, uploaded for a movie called Good and another one called The Manson Brothers Midnight Zombie Massacre, which was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'm going to go see Shang-Chi tonight, actually, ah. at six o'clock. So, um, yeah, you know, that's it's it's one of those things where, like, I'm, I'm consistently pushing out content. Uh, but, yeah, man, when I look at the channel, ultimately what makes me excited and what makes me proud is to look back at this huge library of content. And I think ultimately sometimes it's just a battle in my mind about whether or not I feel the videos and the channel itself should be doing better or worse, you know what I mean? There, it, it, that's always gonna be that internal battle, especially from a creative person who's putting their stuff out there. Like you said, it's kind of like an indicator of your success or accomplishment in a way. But um, ultimately, when I do look back at the channel, man, not only do I have some great reviews with some great conversations like this, you know, the various live streams that I've done, including one that I did with you, um, and like, not only have I had great conversations that are just like cemented on the channel that a lot of times I do go back and revisit for myself or, you know, cool, fun, super cut videos or movie reviews. But ultimately, man, I just look back and I also have great memories in there because I've done vlogs and, and things like that. And I'm sure for yourself, man, I mean, look at your look at your channel and like some of the celebrities you've had a, a moment with that you've been able to capture this moment on that's, you know, celebrates your channel. And it, I think for me, it's like you look back at stuff like that and that is ultimately some of the coolest stuff about YouTube is being able to look back at this stuff that you cemented. Um, you know, like I can go back two years now and look at like, instead of a picture from a certain event that was maybe a special time, I can actually look at, you know, like a, a full blown edited video that I had put together that maybe I don't remember every single cut or every little image or video that I put in there and I'm able to revisit that. So yeah, moving for the, for the future, I'm just trying to enjoy my content for what it is in that moment. Uh, just trying to enjoy like the the process of making it and like being happy with the finished product and uh, just trying to be free in my mind about, you know, the views and when they'll come. Because I'm sure you've also realized, too, as a YouTuber, that there's a million times you put up a video and it doesn't really do well at first. And then you check it right. months later and it's gained yes. hundreds of views or whatever yes. the case may be. So, yeah, moving forward, dude, I, I would love for the channel to, to succeed, gain more subscribers, gain more views. I, I am proud of the channel in a lot of ways. But then also, like I said, that discouragement, just to be honest, um, does kind of take a toll sometimes on your mind. And I think it's really just about mentally focusing or they're not necessarily mentally focusing, but having a different perspective, I guess is the thing. What you're saying though is I get it. Like, um, cause there have been times where like, I think it was recently I'll, I'll put up like a Halo video and I really love Halo. And I know there's a couple people that have subscribed to me that, that like Halo as well, but I'll put up the video and it gets like five views in like 24 hours. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, and for like, and I always think I'm thinking of the ratio cause I always do the math and stuff. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm nearing 3000 subscribers. I got five views. I'm like, man, what am I not doing to reach those other 2,700 people? You know, like what, like what am, what's my disconnect? What's going on? It, do people just not like Halo or do they just not care that I like Halo and they just want me to just be the Venom guy? Like, and I do go back and forth, but I think at the end of the day, that's one of the reasons why I'm ending the Venom show as well. Not just because we've said everything I think I've ever wanted to say about the character and I'm kind of running out of stuff to say. Like when I give an opinion now, people are like, yeah, I've heard this a thousand times before. And I'm like, yeah, so we should just end the show. Um, I, I think it is for me wanting to pull away that safety net of um, this is the thing people know me as, but uh, I, I can provide more and I, I am into other things and I want to do other things. But um, I understand that discouragement, but I do like your perspective on that, that you're like, well, at the end of the day, I still have the community and we're still here and we're still doing our best. And you're right. 
I had, I had some weird video where I talked about some kind of worm that looked like a symbiote and it was like sitting on a rock. And this is from like two years ago. And it, it made like maybe like 200 views at the end of the first month when I uploaded that video. And then the oh, other day I, I saw a comment on there. I go, people are still watching this video. And I went and looked and it had like 40,000 views almost. And I'm like, wow. what the heck? And there's like a million downvotes on it. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> like I'm getting ratioed hard on that video. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, and people are saying like, this isn't a worm. You don't know what you're talking about. You didn't do any research. I'm like, what is happening right now? Like, I can't believe this video garnered that. So you're right. Sometimes things just out of nowhere, you're like, people find your stuff and uh, they'll, you know, I always say time is a construct. It's like a running joke I have, but it's like what you did today, all the hard work you put into something now, someone, like you said, like a year from now, two years from now, they're going to find it and they're going to think it's new to them. So they're going to be like, wow. And then they'll go and look at your other videos and then boom, you got a, you got a new subscriber. And so, yeah, it's, it's a slow burn sometimes. I think also the algorithm and all these other things are screwing with channels like us because For sure. it, it, fa it, fa it doesn't favor niche people. Um, the algorithm. Um, so that does make the uphill battle, uh, you know, a harder climb, I guess I should say. Um, so what, but you, I like that you're persistent. You're sticking with movie reviews. You're really good at them. I love hearing your perspective on stuff. I, nice even when we, when we disagree on something, like you brought me on Mortal Kombat because, because I posted a negative review on it on Instagram and you were like, dude, this is a great time for us to finally chat. You know, like we're, we're on opposite sides of the fence here. And what I love about that conversation was that it was like, neither, we never yelled at each other. Mike never yelled at us. Like we all just listened to each other's opinions and we're like, and ingested it and was like, okay, I hear what you're saying. I disagree. Here's why. And I thought that was just a great example of how fans should act on online as opposed to the vitriol we normally see. So your channel, is that something you kind of target? Like, do you want that more constructive and and maybe not just positive but just more constructive viewpoint and conversations for sure man you know a lot of that stems from i guess just uh, like we we all do it just kind of stems from a, a thing of experience you know I, i'm sure there's been plenty of times that you've been in a conversation talking about something that you're really passionate about and you didn't intend to but you realized afterwards when that person was kind of annoyed talking to you about it that you're like maybe i came on a little bit strong about that and like i think anybody who's into geek stuff and has felt especially like i think anybody who grew up in in our age range like growing up like it now you know these characters and these things are the coolest things the bee's knees everybody loves it but back in the day dude like i, I don't know if it was similar for you but you know i definitely got teased by people for like being into this kind of stuff and picked on from by certain people and you know, it's like Star Wars as well. Like, you know, it's easy to pick on people for that. Whereas now all these geek culture stuff is like the coolest stuff and everybody wants to be a part of it. You know what I mean? The same people who were picking on you when you're younger are the same people who are like, what does that post credit scene mean? You know what I mean? When they go to see a movie. And, and it's just like a, it's a funny thing. So for me, I think I learned from those things. And honestly, the one thing, I'm glad I started my channel when I did because the movie that really did it for me, that really just turned it all around for me, um, was actually Star Wars Episode Eight, The Last Jedi. And I think because the argument around it just got so visceral. Like there was negative yeah. for The Force Awakens and for Rogue One, but it was so, so minimal in comparison to how much people were just excited that Star Wars was back and that it was good. And I love The Last Jedi. And, uh, you know, it's got its flaws, but I, I have my problems with it. Ultimately, I think for me, I didn't like even what I saw myself when that movie came out because I was just going off on people in the comment sections, you know, just trying to defend this movie uh, in comment sections everywhere. And I think a lot of people were doing that and just getting lost in that visceral, just kind of nonsense. And I just realized when I started the channel that the only way that I was ever going to really be able to build a true community that feels a sense of, you know, community uh, would be to be able to just be open to all the various opinions. And I've, I've also fallen in love through this channel and wanting to like, I, when I do a review, I, I want to be fair. I want to critique a movie. I don't want us to do, um, you know, reviews that trash movies. Have have I trashed movies or made jokes about movies and try to be funny and stuff? Sure, sure. It's always, you know, it's also kind of an entertainment element. You know, you want, you're putting on a character to an extent, you know, um, not too much, you know, I'm, I'm myself, but you know, you're, I'm right. on as, as I guess what you could say. Sure. Um, and yeah, I just always wanted to keep it a point to have various opinions. So when I do, lady in the tramp with black tastic and he thought it was horrible but like it's his <laughs> his reaction to it is so funny and he's going right. across his whole storytelling of the movie and 
and he's like rolling his eyes at these you know iconic moments it makes for a fun funny video and even though i disagree with him ultimately i've learned to embrace that so that's why when i saw your opinion that was so like just not in love with the new mortal kombat movie i was like i gotta yeah. have seek on there and then i knew cool then mike has no familiarity with mortal kombat he saw the movie let's get his take on it so it made for a good three-way conversation where we were able to just you know like enjoy each other's opinions for what they were have a laugh at each other's opinions too without it feeling like you're anybody's you know trying to hurt anybody's feelings and ultimately yeah so to answer your question that you asked without you know rambling too much longer yeah without a doubt it it was a a case of, of wanting to just you know, create a sense of uh, an environment where people can be themselves. And so if you look through all of my live streams that I've done at this point now, you know, like, for instance, I have a running gag or running joke at this point with uh, Q Reviews and Rashad G Reviews, who were not fans of uh, Episode 9, Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker. And so almost every time that I have them on, sometimes I'll do in the live streams, I'll just mention like, all right, guys, we're not there to review this, but always, I will always mention that we're there to review the rise of Skywalker. And they always have this reaction of like, Oh, like, I don't want to talk about this crap anymore. But like, it's just, it's a good fun time. I've enjoyed having so many different people on with so many different opinions on things. And, and I've just learned to embrace it. I also love when there's a movie that like people hate and maybe yeah. I kind of love, or I just, <laughs> I know that people hate it and maybe I'm not a huge fan of it, but I find it funny that people hate it. So I right. love to see people's opinions on the movie to see if they hate it too. Cause then if they do, it's just a big laugh. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I get like that too. Sometimes I, uh, I mean, ultimately it's funny, like unless someone's a friend of mine or someone I have conversations with, I typically don't really care like what the masses or anyone think of something. Um, no. I, but I know the benefit of that feeling like that passion whether it's positive or negative i know the benefit to the movie or the detriment to the movie that that causes um so like i really try when i look at things i try to um look at it as someone who's made movies and comic books before when i'm reviewing then i review it as a fan and then i try to see it from a a non-fan's point of view the best i the best i can obviously I, i can't fully do that but I try. So I, those are usually the three avenues I do for reviews is I try to tackle it and play devil's advocate between those three opinions, which is often why I say that my videos aren't reviews, but they're discussions because it's almost internally me discussing things for myself from what I think are three different points of view. Um, yeah. And so it's like a very schizophrenic uh, venom way of like, you know, t- talking to yourself. What What is your perspective on fans kind of that entitlement level? Does that ever pop up on your channel? Like, how do you deal with people who come in aggressively like how do you like uh, you know respond to them in the comments like i, I kind of want to see your perspective on that yeah you know it, it, it definitely it's it's something that's changed over the years and i think a lot of it just has to do with maturing and growing up yeah you know when it comes to entitlement i think for me every time i go into a movie of any kind i feel like especially with the wider it's not like i'm, I'm purposely just you know reviewing star wars content i'm not just doing marvel content I want to be able to be a, a pretty well-rounded, you know, I don't I hate to call myself a film critic because I don't really, you know, film reviewer, I guess, which is the same thing. But, like, um, I want to be pretty well-rounded in that. My, I have a lot of, you know, I think some of the more classic inspirations that people think of on YouTube are, like, Chris Stuckman or Jeremy Johns. But, uh, yeah, and, and they're definitely some of my biggest inspirations. Um, but two of my biggest inspirations for the way I want to come across in my videos, and I st- definitely haven't reached that level yet, but, I'm, you know, it's the two I kind of aspire to. Uh, there's two channels. One of them is named Hello Greedo, mm-hmm. and it's a Star Wars channel. Uh, smaller, he's, you know, he's big, but he's small. You know, that's the thing about YouTube. You can be big within your audience, but then obviously not, like, sure. big, like, general yeah. knowledge. Yeah, like um, or something, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, so Hello Greedo is just this dude that wears a Stormtrooper helmet on at all times. Nobody see, has seen his face on his channel. And he mm-hmm. just talks about movies and predominantly Star Wars things and just kind of just sits there and a lot, does a lot of live streams where he just kind of shoots the shit and just kind of enjoys his time. And one of the things that I really appreciate about his review style, he hates the Star Wars prequels. Um, but he loves the original trilogy and now he's kind of like picky choosy on what works for him moving forward You know what I mean? But he's very much a person who wants something new and different and doesn't like things being regurgitated and ultimately I love the prequels. Those are the Star Wars movies. I grew up on in theaters and uh, the prequels specifically and um, I, I love the prequels and so he hates them, but I love his approach to 
talking about the things that he has a difference about. Like he'll poke fun, he'll make jokes, he'll talk about what he really doesn't like, but he ultimately has a mentality that he just respects other people's opinions. Right. And um always talks about coming at things with a level head. That's one thing he always says. It's like coming at things with a leveled approach. So when he sees fans who are either on one side or the other, just too extreme, you know what I mean? He tends to make like parody videos, kind of making fun of people who want these entitled things, you know, like they feel like they need what they, what what they need to see on the, in the screen is what they want. You know what I mean? Whereas with me, when I go into a movie, I want something to just, I want to see what the creators did. Ultimately the way I see it is like, I've never written a Star Wars movie and I likely never will write a Star Wars film. So for me, I'm like, let me just sit back and not have this entitled mentality of where I think should happen. Of course, there's going to be things that you want to happen. You're going to have some theories and things like that. But I, I always try to remain open. And that then that goes for the big franchise films that I'm a fan of or, you know, just the small romantic drama that I randomly stumbled upon in theaters. You know what I mean? It, it all it all very much is it just depends on the film in and of itself. So when it comes to entitled fans, uh, I just definitely always want to come in with a level head. And then right. when it comes to, you know, I was mentioning another guy, then there's Dan Merle, who was recently with Fandom Entertainment, but then it now has his own oh, channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, he's a, he's a great film critic, and he just does such a great job of breaking things down. And even though sometimes I'm on the complete opposite side of the fence when it comes to our opinions, I love the way he approaches talking about movies. There's a very analytical, very passionate approach in which he wants to sound and look and come across incredibly professional and be able to right. give a review that at the end of the day, one thing I love about his channel as well, he doesn't do scores. And the reason I don't do scores on my channel is because I feel like it kind of gives a blanket number statement kind of idea of like, this is what this movie is. Sure. Whereas for me, I always try to go about it in the approach of whether a film is recommendable or not. So for me, it's like, Hey, like for instance, I just did that monster, that, that, Manson Brothers. It's called the Manson Brothers Midnight Zombie Massacre. Oh, right, right. And the movie was incredibly purposeful in its absurdity. It's going for it's going for ridiculous. It's going for heightened reality. It's one of those films that's a little hard to critique because they're not going for perfect performances, a well laid out three act structure with a narrative through line that you can become emotionally attached to. It's supposed to be just a big fun schlocky wrestlers versus zombie film that's almost trying to be a B movie. And so I will frame that in the review and also at the end say, here, I recommend the movie as a fan of these kinds of movies. However, if you're the kind of individual who doesn't like this kind of stuff, then this you're just not the audience for this. And so I always try to approach how I talk about things with that mentality. And so I feel like that leans into my whole view and approach to anything that's ever fan entitlement, that whenever I go into something, I try to keep in mind what the um, the vision of the creators was you know and and ultimately like that's for me has to er eliminate any entitlement that i have about said property a perfect example because i just recently had a conversation with a friend about this on facebook is uh, the lion king uh reboot that they did a couple years ago oh yeah they a lot of people were really like upset with the film Uh, the film got a lot of hate from a lot of fans because it was so samey it was like a shot for shot remake of the original and people were like you know it's not it's not a better it's not a better version of the original i agree with that but i thought it was a cool different version and when i saw the um behind the scenes footage that had come out before john favreau the creator pretty much said like hey we were we were not trying to reinvent the wheel here at all and we just wanted to be able to show the lion king story in a cool different way than the original film and i think ultimately they succeeded in that it has the same songs, it's the same story, it's got great visual effects, and ultimately that's what their intention was. They weren't trying to reinvent the wheel. And so for me, I feel like then my approach as a fan is, do I do I be upset about the fact that they didn't do something different, or do I recognize that this was their vision and all the talent that went into making this was very much to do this? You know, I feel like you have to kind of critique it on that level. You know, you have to take it in on that level. At least that's my approach to any sort of fan entitlement for myself. I think too many fans just, they take it to the next level. I I can remember, and I'll stop rambling right here, but I can remember when um, The Force Awakens was first announced and they were still talking about it and they were doing these Q&A panels with uh, Kathleen Kennedy and J.J. Abrams and they were doing all this stuff that they had like fans like ask questions at one of these panels that I was watching and 
some of the fans were asking questions about like we already knew that they were going to be decanonizing the old books and that old sure. storyline that focused on Luke and Leia and their kids and right. it was just, there was no way they were going to be able to make the Force Awakens and cram all that information in from years of storytelling in the books. True. True. And so people were asking questions like, "Are we going to see a specific someone from a specific book show up in this movie?" And the you know J.J. Abrams and them were just like. No, like there's going to be an original story like this right. and that. And so you can already tell that those are the fans that are like, well, how are, how are we not going to do that? Like, that's got to be what this movie's about. Like, oh, they're sure. making a new Star Wars movie. Like, all these this stuff that I know has to be in there. Right. And I get that mentality, but ultimately, I think that a lot of people probably went in j- like with a, a jaded mentality or like a more upset mentality about the movie simply because they weren't doing what they wanted it to do right out of the gate instead of taking it for what it was. That, that's what I'll say on that. Well, to me, I mean, you you hit a lot of nails that I actually want to talk about too, which is, um. so if we run a little long, it's okay, because I'm really enjoying this. Uh, so, yeah, for sure. um, but there's um, what you talked about. Uh, so I run into that with like Venom. Like I, I think what the word you're looking for is expectations. Um, people, a lot of fans set their own expectations uh, before, sometimes before getting a trailer, like Spider-Man. I remember like people were like, oh, I'm going to see – you know, five different Spider-Man in this trailer, and I'm going to see this in this trailer. I'm going to see that. And when you start setting your expectations, without just by going off internet rumors or other things like that, and and you know, taking it in as facts or news, then you'll you'll always be disappointed in stuff. Like you know, you'll always let yourself down. So if you sit there and go, "Oh, I know who Mara Jade is, and she's supposed to be in this timeline," and then you go into Episode Nine, you don't get Mara Jade, and you're mad because you didn't get Mary Jade. It's like, but why why would you get Mara Jade? <laughs> like she's not in. What, what, where your expectations are unrealistic, they're too set in what you know, and you're exactly. not being, like I just made a video on this the other day about like you need to be like Bruce Lee says, be like water, you know, like uh, be be more like water. If you pour water into a cup, it becomes the cup. If you pour water into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. You know, he's like you you got to take take like don't f- become a rock and form your opinion and let nothing change it. Flow yeah. with stuff as it pops up. So I, I guess to wrap all this up and stuff like. What, what is kind of your, cause I always try to set goals for myself. I rarely hit them, unfortunately, but I don't let that stop me from making the goals still. What are some things that you would like to see on your channel? Some things that you would like to improve on um, and some things that you, um, you know, hope, um, you know, people take away when they watch your channel. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, again, thank you, man, for having me on and just being able to just talk and get to know each other a lot better. I think it's such an awesome, such an awesome platform, the fact that we can do stuff like this. Um, but yeah, in terms of my channel, man, you know, right now I'm going through a, a slight transitionary period, not too much. I mean, anybody who's watching my content, everything is very much the same and it's going to stay the same. Um, but I have, uh, I'm burning through the rest of the collabs that I currently already have planned. Um both for my channel and other people's channels. And I've already told a couple of people that I'm going to start slowing down on the traditional review collabs that I've been doing for a little bit. And a big reason for that is I have a lot more solo content that I want to start putting out. However, I will be replacing those other collabs with far more live streams. So that's something I want to do a lot more is do more of these. Um, I have a, a series that's similar to the the, the Parasite podcast called Random Rambling, right. where I just yep. have individuals on and we talk. I still got to have you on for uh, Random Rambling. I've had you on yeah. for a spoiler discussion for uh, Mortal Kombat, but definitely want to have you on for an actual uh, Random Rambling, which are similar to this. We just kind of sit around and shoot the shit and talk. And yeah, man, ultimately, that's what I'm going to start doing more of because I think because... I get a little lost in the view count sometimes in my head. I'm still going to be doing out movie reviews and stuff like that, but I have new ideas and, and stuff that I want to start implementing on the channel. I'm working on a new Supercut video uh, for us, for Star Wars, and um, ultimately I just want my channel to continue to grow into this place where I, I just want more views. And I'm so sure that's like uh, everybody who's got a YouTube channel is going to say that. But ultimately I want more views to have more people that I can talk to in the comment section. Right. I think ultimately that's the thing, is when you put a lot of work into this video that you've put – your full soul into, you know, like for your opinion on said thing. And you know that there are other people out there who watch this thing and would probably enjoy your video. I think ultimately I just want uh, my channel to be able to reach, get reached out to a little bit more people so that there's more people in the comments that I can discuss these things with and hopefully start to build more YouTube friendships like the one I've had with you, like the one I've had with Mike or with Dave from Interpreting the Stars or from Trav from Trav Tries or the Q Reviews, Rashadji Reviews, Black Tastic, like the, the, the Big Rob Theory. There's just so many the left and right. And uh, I want to continue to be able to do that and, you know, do 
multiple people random ramblings that's something i'm also going to be looking to do is have like two or three guests on at a time where we just kind of all shoot the shit and so yeah i think ultimately that sense of community is what's continually driving like the force but uh, the driving force behind my channels but i should say you know it's just the uh, ability to be able to kind of meet new people do cool fun things and yeah man you know there's gonna be plenty more vlogs and, and reviews and all that kind of fun stuff coming so that would be my main goal at the moment Awesome. And yeah, I would say everyone out there who's watching, please do subscribe to Anthony. He's really awesome, especially if you love movies, but it sounds like he's got a lot of great content that he already makes on his show that he's going to be expanding on in the future too. And uh, you're right. There is something to be said about that too, where like you, we do work hard on stuff. Like it's funny. Someone was like, uh, I'm surprised some people don't get like, I, I posted 11 videos last week from Monday to, to Sunday. Uh, and while working a full-time job uh, and while doing other things and like and i'm surprised that people like some people go like hey that's amazing but some people are just like more <laughs> and i'm like more huh. like i'm like <laughs> i'm like dude it takes me like maybe i can do if i can do it all in one take which doesn't always happen in videos i hide my cuts behind images a lot um so people think i do things in one take but i don't uh sometimes there's full like i couldn't remember the cast of the superman animated series because i mean i'm having memory problems anyway but that one was a really bad one so i actually cut the video i turned it off completely and 20 minutes later came back and just had everything in the same spot and re-recorded after i reread everyone's name and i actually wrote a cheat sheet and taped it to the tripod uh so like it, <laughs> it it's funny but like the thing is people don't see that people don't see that you may have put an hour into a 10 minute video of just recording it but then you also probably spent two or three hours if not longer to edit it and then it had to render and then it goes up on youtube it's like so people are like why why didn't this video go up like 10 minutes after like this other person did i'm like yeah but that other person probably just live streamed it did their reaction and captured it all at once and then just se separated the clip and uploaded it yeah, yeah. Anyone, can, anyone can do that, but I like putting work into my stuff. You know, I want the lighting to be as best as it can. I want the audio to sound the best as it can. So to me, I'm like, ah, I feel like, I don't know, like I'm, I'm, I know I'm not making mind blowing content. I'm still just a dude sitting in a chair, but I want it to be at least a little bit more interesting than just someone on a live stream reacting to it, you know? And uh, so I get it. There's a lot of things we do that people don't see. And so for that reason, I wish that people knew more about that. It might have more people subscribe when they come across our videos. So again, I can only encourage everyone out there. If you if you like movies, if you like a lot, you know, anything talking about, if you like collaboration, if you like funny humor, like Anthony's a great guy. He's obviously just watched a 40 minute or so episode with him here. <laughs> he's very likable. He's super nice. Um, he's a very hardworking guy and he's very passionate. That's one thing I noticed about him. Um, and there's nothing wrong with talking about numbers and saying like, I wish my views were higher. I feel that way sometimes too, and I don't think that makes us bad people. We're here for multiple reasons, and one of those reasons is to grow a community, and it's hard to do that when our numbers don't grow. And so, uh, so yeah, I encourage yeah. anyone out there, give this guy a chance, go subscribe to him, check out his videos, he's amazing. Um, any last words you wanna say before we head out, man? No, I mean, I'll say the same to you guys. I mean, I'm sure everybody who's watching this is already subscribed to your channel, but if you just randomly stumbled upon this, or if you're one of my viewers and you're not already subscribed um, to Seek, please do, Seek and Destroy. You're on the channel already. The red button says subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, no, nothing else, man. Thank you again for having me on. Genuinely a, a pleasure. It's been long overdue, uh, but definitely looking forward to doing more of these and doing maybe more on my channel, having you on, uh, maybe with some other individuals, maybe some spoiler discussions, who knows? That's another thing I'm also looking to do is maybe um, some watch parties. Uh, maybe I grab myself and a couple other YouTubers and we all watch a movie live together and Ooh, we give okay. kind of commentary throughout. So I'd love to have you on for something like that. I know you've done that on a, quite a few occasions. Um, um, as well as, uh, yeah, just having uh, more people on for those live streams where we all just kind of discuss something, maybe a, a big review collab where we have a couple people come in and just review a movie on a live stream instead. I feel like that discussion-based thing is going to be a little bit more where I'm leaning in the future for my collabs versus the more traditional edited version that I've been doing lately, even though I still love doing those videos. So, yeah, man, awesome. uh, no final words, but thank you again. I really do appreciate it for the opportunity. Of course, man, anytime. And I, all those things you invited me to, I'll be there, man, no problem. Um, yeah. And everyone else, thank you all so much for watching the show. Like I said, I'll put a link down below to Anthony's YouTube channel. Definitely sit, check it out, subscribe, um, and go watch his videos, like them, comment on them, you know, what, whatever, engage. Like, engagement helps us out a lot. And so anytime we get likes, even dislikes, if you dislike, 
tell us why you dislike. And that way it helps us have a conversation, might help us grow as content makers too. So I always invite people to do that too. If you ever dislike something, always follow it up with a comment um, just because that helps the engagement of the channel. If you if you feel passionate enough about a video to downvote it, chances are you'll, you'll have something to say. So please do. Uh, I love that engagement. And, uh, and I, I encourage you to bring it here to this video, but everything over on Andy's cha Anthony's channel, like please go check him out and love his stuff as much as I do. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's awesome. It's so great talking to you and we'll definitely do this again for sure. Absolutely, man. Can't wait. Awesome. Thank you all for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you in the future. Peace.